buying a home here in Canada, especially in Toronto, is super challenging. It's really difficult to find something that halfway meets your criteria while still being affordable. So we, I and my husband moved here to Canada about five years ago. And when we arrived here, we knew that one day we wanted to buy our own home. And we thought, let's just start with a starter home, something small, like a one bedroom or a small semi-detached house. But it turned out that even those were super expensive. And as immigrants, we were faced with some additional challenges. Moving here to Canada, in a way, it was like starting all over again. In the process of moving, we had so many expenses to set up a new home, to pay for our studies, because at some point, both of us were studying here. And for that, we had to use our savings, which we had painfully accumulated over the years. So that alone set us back financially for some time. And in addition to that, in the beginning, we didn't always have work, so there were times when either one of us had a job or no one was working and during those times we had to tap into our savings again. So the dream of owning our own home, of buying our own home seemed like it would take forever. And then this year we were finally ready to buy a home but we were faced with a really crazy property market. Home prices have skyrocketed but even more than that interest rates, mortgage rates are super super high. But nevertheless Nevertheless, if you followed our journey, then you will know that we finally found our gem and now we are finally living in our own condo, which we have recently purchased for under $500,000. And it's not perfect by all means, but we're super, super happy with it and it feels so comfortable living in our own place. And if you want to know more about how our condo looks like beyond just this frame, then you can click on the video up here and watch my condo tour. I know that many of you watching are also immigrants, you've perhaps just moved here or even have been living in Canada for a couple of years and you've also been thinking of one day buying your own home here in Canada, maybe in a few months or in a few years or perhaps you just want to prepare yourself so that when the time comes you do have the options, you do have the means to purchase your home. So in this video today I want to share with you how we saved up for our down payment for our first home in Canada and also how long it took us. We first started seriously considering buying a home here in Canada in about year three because before year three we were still so busy with getting settled here in Canada and we were also busy saving up money in our emergency fund so we had not seriously thought about buying a home here. So after year three when we had already applied for our PR and there was hope inside that we could actually settle here in Canada we started really seriously thinking about buying a home and saving up for a down payment. So about saving up for the down payment. For us, everything started with the end in mind. In order to stay motivated to save up for that down payment, we had to know what we were aiming at. So the first thing we did was to figure out approximately what kind of home we wanted to buy, what the price range would be, and also what the exact amount of down payment we needed to save. And at that time, after looking into the property market, we had become much, much more realistic. So we knew we were looking for a starter home, which at that time meant something like a one bedroom apartment within the price range of $400,000 to $500,000. And since we knew that we wanted to go with a 5% down payment, we knew that we needed to save up at least $20,000 to $25,000 for the down payment alone. But in case you guys don't know, apart from the down payment, there's also something called closing costs that you will need to pay for in cash when you purchase a home and the amount of that will depend among others on the price of the home so for that we allocated around ten thousand dollars so to be safe we took the upper number which was twenty five thousand dollars plus ten thousand dollars equals thirty five thousand dollars so then we knew that our target was going to be thirty five thousand dollars and it was so motivating to have that fixed number that thirty five thousand dollars that we knew we needed to work towards. One thing to add, before we moved to Canada, back then in Indonesia, we already had a long work history and we had accumulated some savings, but we knew that we did not want to touch those savings. We wanted to save and invest that money and not put it towards a home for the reason that we didn't want to put all of our money that we had into one basket. So we wanted to save up for the down payment separately. So the next thing we did was that we needed to find a way to keep ourselves disciplined. So the question was, where would we save the money? If we just kept the money in our savings account, then it would be very easily spent on other things. 
So we decided at that time to put our money into what's called an RRSP or a registered retirement savings plan. An RRSP in simple terms is a government approved account that lets you contribute certain amounts of money every month and there's a cap for that every year to save towards retirement while enjoying tax benefits. So by putting your money, so part of your income that you save into your RRSP, that will reduce the tax payable on your current income. So you pay less tax. And another great thing is that here in Canada, there's something called the HBP or the Home Buyers Plan that allows you to take a certain amount of money out from your RSP to pay for your home purchase. Since 2023, by the way, there's a new type of account called the FHSA or the First Home Savings Account, which is a savings account that is dedicated towards saving towards a new home purchase. But in this video today, I will not go into the details of RSP and FHSA. The point here is just that we needed to pick a dedicated account in which we would save our down payment money in. So the next thing we did was that each of us, I and my husband, opened an RRSP account and we did it with Wealthsimple, but you can do it with almost any financial institution here in Canada. But we used Wealthsimple. It was just the most practical thing for us to do. It was all online. So every month we could just deposit money into our RRSP account and watch it as it grew. Now, the next question you might ask is, so how long did it take us until we had our down payment together? That $35,000. I mean, it does seem like a lot of money, right? It took us approximately two years to save up that $35,000. So about $17,500 each year or about $1,500 each month. And I know that for some of you who are perhaps earning a higher income, that is a very small amount. $1,500 per month, that's easy. But some of you or many of you even might think that 1500 is a lot of money each month. How can you possibly save up that much money? To pull this off, to regularly save this amount of money, there are a few components that go into that, among others, the earning side and the spending side. Let's talk about the earnings side first. So after that three-year mark here in Canada, both of us were either working full-time or working several part-time or freelance jobs. So our combined household income was well above a six-digit number. But your ability to save is not just determined by your income because there are so many people who earn 200, 300, even $400,000 each year, but still live paycheck to paycheck and are not able to save a dime. So apart from increasing our earnings, the other really, really important thing for us to control and manage was our spending. Because as you guys know, it's so easy to overspend, especially in a big city like Toronto. So on the spending side, we really had to contain our budget. And our biggest win here was to manage the biggest expense, which was our rent. So of course, this was five years ago and rents at that time were much, much cheaper. But while we saw our other friends, our fellow classmates in our course, program paid $1,800 or $2,200 for their apartments, we decided to live in a 320 square foot studio apartment in a beautiful area, by the way, that was in the Swansea High Park area, for which we only paid $1,180. And at first we thought that, okay, we would only live in that studio apartment for one year or two. And after that, as our income grew, we would upgrade to something nicer and larger. But since I told you at year three, we we knew that we wanted to save up for that down payment as fast as possible. We decided to extend our stay in that studio apartment and ended up living there almost five years. And at this point, you might ask me, how is it like living in a small studio apartment? Is it really possible for two people to share a studio apartment? If you are considering that and want to know more about that, then you can watch this video up here. So to save more money, we stayed in a studio apartment and with that, we tackled our biggest expense. And in addition to that, we also tracked and reviewed our budget on a monthly basis. So we always knew where our money went, how much we spent on food, on transportation, etc. And by doing that, we could keep ourselves from going overboard on our spending and stay more disciplined with our savings plan. I won't go into more details on this, so if you want to get more tips on how to financially get ahead here in Canada, especially as a newcomer, you can also check out this video up here. So during that time, our savings ratio was about 60%. So for every $10 that we made, we saved about $6. 
So each time we got our paycheck, we put part of that money into our RSP. And by doing that alone, we saved even more money because that reduced our taxable income. Okay, and now let's talk about a dilemma that we faced. Because at that time, apart from saving for a down payment for our home, we also wanted to keep on investing in the stock market. So that was a bit of a dilemma. We were asking ourselves, okay, how much should we put towards the house? How much should we invest into the S&P 500? And one of our solutions was to have not just an RSP account, but also a TFSA account. The TFSA account is a tax-free savings account. In short, the difference is that the money that you put into your TFSA is already taxed. So if you invest in a stock or an ETF and it grows and you earn dividends, that money basically grows tax-free. And if you want to withdraw it, it's also tax-free because you've already paid tax on the money. And knowing how to use your RSP and TFSA accounts to get ahead financially here in Canada is super important. And I'll make another video on that to explain in more detail. So to make sure that we did not just save for our home down payment, but kept on investing for our future as well, we saved up more than $1,500 each month. So every month we kind of split up our savings and put $1,500 towards our down payment in our RSPs and then put around $1,000 to $2,000 depending on how much we had that month into our TFSA and invested into ETFs and stocks. And of course, had we saved all our money towards the down payment of our home, then we would have been able to buy our home much, much earlier. But we just didn't want to do that. I think that in the process of saving up for our down payment, the most important aspect was not the technical aspects, opening the accounts and budgeting and everything, but it was more the psychological aspect. I think that the biggest challenge of saving up towards a down payment is staying motivated because there are so many diversions, so many temptations you could just use that money for other things like going on a trip to Europe or buy a car right or whatever so one thing that we started doing after year three to get us motivated and help us stay on track is to actually start looking at homes we went online on various property sites and started browsing for homes that met our criteria not just in Toronto but we also considered uh, other cities like London Kitchener and so we just wanted to do some research and get a feel about what's out there in the market and what options we had. So after a while, we kind of had an idea of what the ideal starter home for us would be. So we kind of had this avatar home in front of us, something concrete that we could work towards. And when we found some homes that met our criteria and were kind of within our budget range, that was actually really motivating because we thought, okay, if we stay on track with our savings plan, if we stay disciplined, then perhaps in about a year from now or even faster than that, we will already own our own home. And it actually kind of happened that way. So end of last year, we finally got our down payment together. And then we started to get really serious. So apart from looking at homes online, we started looking at homes in person. So early this year, we started going to open houses. We contacted a agents and went for a viewing and doing that made everything start to become real. So about a month ago, we finally found our dream condo that was within our budget and we bought it and now we are living in it. I am recording it in our new condo. And if you want to know more about our whole journey of buying this condo, everything from viewing properties, working with a realtor, working with a mortgage broker, getting our mortgage approved, etc., then you can watch my series up here about how we went house hunting for a condo under $500,000 in the GTA. So all in all, it feels like everything happened really fast. Right now, maybe you want to buy a home too and you're wondering whether or not you'll ever get there. So here are my tips that I would give to someone who is in the process of trying to save up for a down payment for a home. Tip number one is to get yourself motivated. It's very, very easy to think about all the reasons why it won't happen. Could be the lousy economy, the sky high home prices, the super high living costs, your insufficient salary, and so on. There are always reasons why it could not work but there's always a way. So first you need to find out why you actually want to buy that house. What is your purpose? 
It could be that you just want to have a sense of permanency. It could be that you want to have a place that you can call your own and that you can renovate and change however you want. Or perhaps you simply don't want to be at the mercy of your landlord raising your rents or being kicked out and having to move to another apartment and pay even higher rent. So to get yourself motivated, first be very clear on the reasons why you want to buy a home and then start looking for concrete samples of homes that match your criteria. Start researching, learning and finding out what it is exactly that you want in a home. And through that process alone, you will be able to build up your motivation that will get you into the right mindset to start saving. Tip number two is to decide on a target. Don't be ambiguous with your goals. If you have a goal, you need to define it very clearly. So as soon as possible, decide the type of home that you want to have. For example, a one bedroom condo or a semi detached house. What your target price or price range is, let's say $500 to $600,000 or even $700 to $800,000. And also what is the down payment amount that you are saving towards? In general, if you have a down payment of 20%, the advantage is that you do not have to pay CMHC insurance. But the disadvantage is, of course, that it might take you much longer to save up for that down payment. And at that time, perhaps the price of homes have risen by too much. Depending on the price of your home, you can also buy a home with a lower down payment, for example, 5%, in which case you do need to pay for that CMHC insurance, but that amount can be rolled into your mortgage amount. Also, in calculating how much you need to save, do not forget the closing costs, and that can be anywhere between $5,000, $10,000, or $15,000, depending on where your home is, how much the taxes are, and of course, the price of the home. So once you have that number, let's say that your target number to save is $40,000, it becomes a concrete, non-negotiable goal. So how long will it take you to save up that, let's say, $40,000? And there are two ways to go about it. The first one is that you determine how much you can save each month and based on that, calculate how long it will take. Let's just say that you can only save $4,000 each year. So based on that, it would take you 10 years to save $40,000. If you save up $10,000 per year, then it will take you four years and so on. And that just seems like an awful long time. So let's do it the other way around. First, determine within how many years you want to have that down payment of $40,000 together. Let's say that you want to have that money together within three years. Then you calculate backward from there $40,000 divided by three, which is $13,333. And that is the amount that you will need to save up each year. From there, you then calculate backward how much you would then need to earn every year and what your maximum expenses can be. Tip number three is to decide where you want to save up for your down payment. So now that there is an account called the FHSA, you can decide to save it in that account or you can also save it in your RSP. Break down your yearly goal into your monthly goal. Let's say that your yearly savings goal for your home down payment is $12,000. That means that every month you need to be putting $1,000 into that FHSA or your RSP. Even better, break it down bi-weekly. So if you get paid bi-weekly, every time you get that paycheck, take a portion of it and put it in your RSP. For example, $500 with every paycheck. Okay, I understand it in theory, but I just can't save that amount of money. It's just too much. And that's where we get to tip number four, which is that you need to make the hard decisions. For some people, it might be very easy to save up that amount of money, especially if you're a couple. It might only take you two years, one year, or perhaps even only eight months. But it might take others much, much longer, especially if you're a single income earner, if you're earning only an entry level income and you have a ton of dependents. So there are two ways to tackle this challenge. Number one is find ways to earn more. You can do that either by starting a side hustle, which will take you some time, but I think it's still worth it because in the long term you will be earning more money or something that's much easier and much faster is consider moving to a different company. If at your current company, you've been doing such a great job but you had trouble getting a raise all these years then consider moving to another company the truth is that as a newcomer as someone newly hired you often have better negotiation power 
If you want to learn more about this, about how you can potentially increase your income by 20, 30, or even 50% by moving to another company, then you can check out my other channel called the Multiple Careers Channel. So one way to save more is to try and earn more. The second way is to find a way to cut your expenses. And by that, I don't mean just cutting out a latte or one time eating out. To significantly increase the amount that you save every month, you have to make a hard decision. Take a look at your expenses and look at the largest budget items. Usually those would be your rent or transportation, so your car. So even if as a single person you are earning $80,000 per year, which is quite great, but if your rent is $2,800 plus utilities perhaps $3,000, then you will still not be able to save any money. So if you're really on this quest to save up for a down payment, consider the alternatives. You could share an apartment with someone else and by doing that split your rent in half or if you're now renting a two-bedroom apartment you could rent out one room and earn some income from that or if you cherish your privacy simply move to a smaller unit so if now let's say you're paying 2200 or 2500 dollars for a one-bedroom apartment why not consider moving to a studio apartment where you pay just $1,800 so you can save $500. And remember, this is just a temporary solution. Delayed gratification so that in the future you can get what you want, which is your own place. Tip number five I have for you so you can quickly save up your down payment is to go step by step in your home buying process. And this is what I mean. It is very tempting to look at those gorgeous three bedroom homes, which cost $2 million or maybe a semi detached two bedroom apartment, which cost $1.2 million. I know they're beautiful, they're spacious and so on. But what if it takes you five to eight years to save up for that down payment to buy that kind of home? By the time you have your down payment together in five years from now, perhaps that house doesn't cost 1.1 anymore, but it's already $2 million. So instead of aiming too high and trying to buy something that you cannot afford now, go about it step by step and just start with something smaller, something cheaper that you can already afford in the next one to two years. After that, when your income goes up and you have more equity, you can always trade up. Let me know in the comments, guys, which of these tips you found useful. And in case you've already bought your own home, then please feel free to share in the comments any other tips that you might have for people who are trying to save up for a down payment for how they can do it faster. I hope you like this video, guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye.